Well, the wind has increased a little bit and we're, uh, we're looking to reef again. Now, it, is, it has been 12 hours since we started, so we've, we're, we're almost 50 miles into this, so we're making great time. Anyway, it's almost, it's almost time to turn the nav lights on and we're going to tuck that reef in. The professor's going to uh, record me while I do this. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover Story. Quite a bit of weather helm uh, before full sail on. You can shoot her in now too. I'd say we lost a knot. <laughs> Rovers, it is 6 a.m. on day two. I'm about to go up and relieve the professor on watch. We, uh, we're in St. George's Bay. It's blowing pretty strong. I, I really don't know the wind speed, but Wave Rover has two uh, reefs tucked in. Um, we're making almost five knots, but it doesn't feel to me that we're under control. So as soon as I get up there, I'm going to uh, stick another reef in. Anyway, it's been uh, quite the night. We made a lot of headway, but uh, it's these are pretty strong conditions for a little boat. All right, we're on our second day. It's blowing a little bit strong. Um, the sun just came up. How does uh, how does it feel up here? Yeah, it's a bit rolly, but the uh, the helm's pretty heavy, so we should probably take another reef. Okay, Let's so. Do you want to switch positions? I'll uh, just steer from that side and then I'll stick the reef in here. Yep. 
Just a bunch of rollers coming in behind us from the strong winds we had overnight. No way that was 10 knots last night. No way. <laughs> <laughs> it was 15 to 20, probably closer to 20. handles well though. I really like this sail. Like you just decrease the amount of effort on the helm from I don't know say 15 pound pole down to about a five. Yeah. I mean we can we can drop it one more pound. Why? It's a, it's fine now. It's fine. My next question is what's for breakfast? Eggs. Eggs. All right. Well, we got the odd uh, little wash over the side here. I'm assuming that gap over there is the causeway. basically have one more reef point left. Well, really we have two if we have to. Well, Rovers, I just tucked that reef in and uh, boy, it made a difference on the control of the boat. We're, we went from, I don't know if you could pick it up, uh, the professor said he had about 15 pounds of pressure to control the tiller when uh, before I put the reef in and then after putting the reef in it was it dropped down to less than five. Now I did make some improvements on route and I'll show you that when we've got a little more um, uh, well less wind noise and then we'll there are some improvements I have to wait until we're alongside to make as a result of this sale. This sale has been absolutely fantastic you know in the sense that I've been able to uh, test out quite a few things uh, mainly the reefing which is working great I mean it, it really couldn't get any. It was a cold and dreary night. <laughs> Well, we're, uh, we're just approaching the canal and what the canal authority wants us to do is when we get underneath the high power lines to give them a call by a telephone. 
Uh, we can use uh, VHF, but they prefer the uh, telephone. So um, we're going to do that. And then we are literally one mile away from the canal. Uh, it is blowing probably about 15 knots. We have the sail uh, almost fully reefed and we're doing five knots. So pretty, pretty amazing really. There's the high power wires. Okay. We're going in the lock right now. Captain Allen is in control. <laughs> coming out of the canal. How was that, Alan? That was exciting. That was really <laughs> exciting because the, uh, they had a bad experience <coughs> with the sailboat just before, so they were, they were on top alert. And uh, we've got a ground swell coming through here. So when we came alongside, and it's pretty steep and rough concrete. And uh, the, the guy was great, though. He was, you know, give me the line. And, uh, you know, we just, just stopped the boat. And we have to wait a few minutes for the, for the lock open but we're through now we're pretty much on the Atlantic side out of the Northumberland Strait into the North Atlantic where men are men and sheep are nervous <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that means <laughs> so after a very successful first passage approximately a hundred nautical miles uh, in excess, uh, we had winds in excess of 20 knots and uh, yeah, just a lot of fun to be back on the water. Uh, let me just show you the state of Wave Rover right now. So in the rush to get her going, um, nothing was really put away properly. I mean, we've got a full load of water and food and everything, but didn't really get a chance to stow everything so a lot of these bins and things will be emptied and organized today and tomorrow and Mrs. Rover is driving over to Port Hawkesbury and she's going to bring some more supplies and then take away all the extra stuff that I don't need but yeah the important thing was to get going and uh, it was it was stowed bed better than this for the voyage or the passage uh, nothing nothing fell over because we didn't heal that far despite uh, some really rolly conditions we didn't roll uh, anywhere near what wave rover one would have rolled like um, you know in the past so very happy with the performance anyway rovers as always thanks for watching and Forge your own adventure. <laughs>